making it. Welcome back. You're watching Brass Tags. The state police has denied permission for the Marathi Convention on Marathi Mahamelava in Belagavi. Now, the state police also detained Maharashtra Ekikaran Samiti leader and working president Manohar Kinekar and other leaders. These developments happen in the wake of fresh tensions between Maharashtra and Karnataka over the Belagavi border dispute, with none other than the Union Home Ministry trying to mediate between the two states currently at loggerheads. Now, the present session of the State Assembly, the winter session of uh, State Assembly of Karnataka, is being held in Belagavi, like it is done each year, which is read as an assertion by the Maratha activists on the other side. In response, the Ekikaran Samiti organizes this convention on the first day of the assembly session for years now. In the wake of the recent developments, the Belagavi border dispute continues to be a flashpoint between these two states. A complete resolution is clearly not in sight, but it seems that even the tempers have not come down. Our focus. लोकतांत्रिक आंदोलन था किंतु कर्नाटक की सरकार ने उसको परमिशन नहीं दी कर्नाटक की सरकार से बात करेंगे कर्नाटक के मुख्यमंत्री जी से भी बात करेंगे हमारे आदरणीय गृह मंत्री जी ने जो सूचना दी थी उस सूचना का पालन न होते हुए उनको अवमानित किया जा रहा है Well, who's stoking the tensions and where is the resolution to this decade-old dispute which is also pending in the Supreme Court of India? The State Reorganization Act was challenged by one of the states. Joining us on the broadcast is Mr. Krishna Hegde. He's the Shiv Sena Shrinde faction leader. Dr. Seema Malik of the NCP is joining us on the broadcast. She's a national spokesperson. Rahul Ishwar, who's an activist and author, is also joining us on the show. Krishna Hegde ji, I'm coming to you first. Uh, the manner in which just like the Ekikaran Samiti ke logon ki puri permission ko cancel kiya gaya, section 144 has also been put in place it has given rise to fresh tensions in this entire area with the union home ministry trying to mediate between karnataka and maharashtra there were high hopes that this matter can be resolved does a resolution look very likely is it still possible can there be a political solution to the belagavi dispute anusha ji first me let, you, let me uh, inform you that this matter is with the honorable supreme court hmm and uh, a decision is awaited on that hmm. until then our honorable uh, home minister shri amit shah ji had called a meeting of the cm and the deputy cm shri ekna shinde ji and padnavis ji hmm. and the cm of uh, karnataka bomai ji and suggested that there should be a coordination committee and a, 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 you know a committee of around three ministers from each side hmm. to look to this issue and till then have an impasse Uh, as you are aware, it is the Congress which was in the center for 50 years, ruling the center. Hmm. And when it was ruling in the center, it was also ruling in Maharashtra for 50 years and Karnataka for 50 years. Hmm. And in spite of ruling in all three places for 50 years together, hmm. they were not able to bring a resolution to this to this issue. Hmm. Moreover, they had formed a Maharashtrian committee in mid 1970s. Hmm. And uh, that report was also rejected not only by Maharashtra and Karnataka, hmm. but all the other states involved also, including Karnataka, Kerala, Chandigarh, Punjab, and all these hmm. uh, other states of India. Hmm. So it's the Congress which is stoking the fire now, considering that they have hardly any representation in Belgaum for decades now, hmm. and it is the BJP there which is in uh, in power with the elected representatives. Hmm. And uh, the Congress wants to make a pitch for the next assembly elections, which are coming up. And therefore, they are trying to create this trouble. Now, the But surprising part is Shivsena. Mr. Hegri, just one follow-up question that I have with you. You you write in pointing out that uh, for a long time in Indian political history, it was the Congress Party that was ruling both the states and also at the union level. Things have turned around. You have the BJP, which is now ruling in coalition in the state of Maharashtra, uh, administering the state of Karnataka as the government of the day, and at the union level. Then, can we expect a political solution? That was my original question to you. Of course, with the intervention of Honorable uh, Home Minister Amit Shah ji, hmm. I'm sure that there will be this issue is going to be solved. But since it's a long-pending issue, it is not going to be solved so easily, hmm. and definitely not in five months that we are in power. Hmm. 
people who have been there for 50 years are not been able to do anything about it hmm. and they expect us to get our solution in 5 months no i'm that not a, i'm not i'm not i'm not saying for a second mr hegde that you can get a solution in few months but the fact that this kind of maratha convention that was being organized the marathi convention which was being organized the permission of which has been cancelled which has led to tensions on the ground so the expectation was that with the intervention of the government at least some good sense will prevail on the ground and these kind of tensions will stop but that hasn't happened uh, honorable amit shah ji has spoken to the bjp chief minister and deputy chief minister of maharashtra and the chief minister of maharashtra who are from uh, the bjp and the bjp coalition hmm, hmm. but there are always some uh, elements in the ncp and like you know today some ncp leaders went to the border hmm. some shivsena leaders went to the border hmm. and the surprising part is it's the congress who is stoking the fire in karnataka and it's the shivsena who is uh, supporting the congress here hmm. so firstly shivsena has to make its stand clear at whether they support the uh, you know uh, fire stoking by the doctor doctor seema malik some ncp leaders also to went to the area. went to the uh, you know border area area where there are tensions on the ground which are existing at this point in time uh, ncp also is being questioned by mr hegre and they're saying even your conduct is questionable because you're stoking the fire why our conduct is questionable i don't know hmm. and this is a very unfortunate if you cannot uh, move from one state to another state in a country like india karnataka is not something outside india where we can't go or something hmm. and uh, i don't know why they they have det- detained them and they didn't allow them to go there hmm. and previously also i think uh, uh, two of the ministers were supposed to go to karnataka for hmm. this uh, for the this, this this dispute of a uh, border and they were also not allowed mr chandrakanta patil and uh, one more ministers were supposed to go there so hmm. this is a very unfortunate that you cannot move from one state to another state and this issue is a you know almost five decades old issue it, it all hmm. started in 1960 and hmm. when the maharashtra demanded for eight uh, 816 villages for them which hmm. are which were all marathi speaking hmm. so uh, and it was rejected by karnataka then in 1966 as you, as you all know the mahajan commission was made which uh, whose decision was also not acceptable acceptable to maharashtra as they hmm. said that the belgaum and the 247 uh, villages will be given to the karnataka and hmm. 264 to the the maharashtra and then the, uh, in 2004 it was they went to the supreme court mm. and and you know the matter is still pending mm. so uh, it is a sub judicial matter but uh, what 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 we really want is as you know there is a uh, there is a government of bjp in karnataka in maharashtra and in the center also mm. and they mm. had a meeting with uh, respectable uh, Amesh Amesh Shah ji and mm. with all three and still the position is like this mm. so uh, i don't know what to say and and see what we want we we can see we can very well understand that in what circumstances mr shinde was uh, made chief minister of the maharashtra and uh, I, i we understand his majboori we really want that he But, should what we want is something very simple that mm. he should he, he should engage himself he should react uh, more strongly he should have a strong um, you know voice for maharashtra people of maharashtra which are, which i think which is uh, not not seen at present and we understand why it is so we and uh, everybody understand this thing so this is what we really want is that uh, the matter is in the supreme court what we want simply is that you know but but, but, be, but one know, thing one thing should, dr seema malik you know all the legal efforts all the legal efforts to Yeah. You know, uh, the State Reorganization yeah. Act 1956 has been challenged at the Supreme Court of India. And yeah. even if the Supreme Court looks into this matter, yeah. various legal experts have pointed out that the Belagavi border dispute requires a political solution and not so much an intervention by the judiciary. That has been the argument for a very long time. But but what it looks like is that most of the political parties even when it's ruled by the same, you know, government of the day by the same political party, they are not e- they are not able to come on the table and resolve the dispute rahul i'm bringing you in into the discussion does it not suit the political parties to resolve yeah, the, this the dispute are, absolutely yes ma'am two submissions yeah. one on a larger point hmm. politics stop and patriotism should triumph hmm. we are not for dispute like india china or india pakistan 
they are two great states of india one belong to the state of the great maratha chhatrapati shivaji and one has a great legacy of uh, you know uh, the uh, vijayanagara empire and many of the great kings in the uh, ancient karnataka region hmm. so there are two great states everyone respects and look, uh, looks upon and even bangalore and bombay or mumbai are some of the great cities of india hmm. unfortunately but many a times politicians use these kind of thing to create leverage for themselves hmm. coming from my state kerala we also had a dispute with tamil nadu regarding a dam and there were some of the clashes there were some abuses clashes hmm. but it is painful to see one indian hitting another indian or abusing another indian hmm. just because they belong to different states hmm. it's high Time, there should be a consensus and yes rightly pointed out honorable supreme court will have to give out a decision but i also believe hmm. supreme court will also go down the path of conciliation and mediation hmm. because at the end of the day it is not about either one of them winning either everyone winning together hmm. such disputes are natural in border areas where there are many languages similar culture or divergent culture hmm. these things will happen and india has a, a very diversity we are a nation of great diversity and we are united by it it's absolutely incumbent upon the politician not to use this leverage to create their own political capital further the division rather it is the responsibility i have great faith in honorable uh, our home minister sri amit shah ji who is a very strong uh, political leader as we all know yeah. rather than having politics let us have a patriotic consensus so that both the great states of maharashtra and karnataka will end up healing the wounds they have if they have in their mind mr hegre uh, the argument which is being made by you know rahul is pertinent that uh, there should be a political leadership at the state level and at the union level that should come to together and try to resolve this this, uh, this dispute um, i he he's talking about you know the water sharing the mulla peria dam i remember the kaveri water dispute that had knocked the doors of the supreme court of india and despite multiple orders of the supreme court even seeking compliance of those orders was a huge headache for the supreme court of the day uh, for the simple reasons that some of the issues are political in nature they cannot be solved through judiciary coming to the point that the ncp spokesperson was making mr hegre that the present state government of maharashtra is not strong enough quote and quote to pursue the cause of the people of maharashtra you're not putting the case as strongly as you should mr hegre anusha ji you'll have to give me 2 minutes to reply sure, to both sure, the sure the first thing is there is a very strong leadership at the center with honorable prime minister narendra modi ji and honorable home minister amit shah ji hmm. and amit shah ji has intervened in this and he has brought about Uh, a kind of a dialogue and i think he is the first co minister in independent india or since the inception of the states that a home minister has gotten both the chief ministers from both sides and made them sit across a table and brought across the mediation mm-hmm. i don't remember anywhere before this in the last 50 years that this has been done mm-hmm. so i think it is one of the most uh, you know mm-hmm. positive steps taken by the honorable hm mm-hmm. the second thing is uh, our learned uh, ncp spokesperson dr malik said hmm. uh, about uh, why people can't move around in the in a free country hmm. of course you can move around in a free country hmm. our minister chandrakant dada patil and uh, our minister of state for home mr shabbu rajay desai hmm. and our member of parliament in, of the of the kolapur area darshil bane ji hmm. did not go there because they did not want to form in trouble hmm. but uh, they will be going there eventually because we have to be hmm. part of the discussion Hmm. but what the ncp leader did today was he went together with around 300 karyakartas yeah yeah outing slogans against the government yeah. and obviously when you are doing something like that and trying to uh, stoke fire hmm. then uh, obviously for every action there is going to be a reaction hmm. and he was stopped at the border hmm. so i am not justifying uh, his movements yeah. but uh, justifying i am uh, but i would definitely question the way he is going about things and why is why is, why did the ncp leader go about to do such Doctor, things Dr Dr Malik it's well known that the Belagavi border area has seen multiple protests even earlier there were various leaders who wanted to visit the border area but they were denied permission section 144 was imposed there were prohibitory orders that were in place why would a leader from the NCP go with 300 of its supporters just to make a point this is clearly playing with the law and order so why why can't they go why can't we protest it's a, you know in a free country like this there's no for a you know for a peaceful protest or something it is not no it should not be denied from some government yeah like but even for, a, not, uh, even for a even for a protest even something. for a protest so, you require see, permission why, don't why you why mes mes every time they are having a convention you huh. you yourself see you everybody knows that that they having on the first day of assembly they are having a convention on um, 
convention at Karnataka, then why MES was also not allowed? Hmm. So this is something, you know, uh, very strange that uh, I don't know, I think every Indian has got a right to protest, a peaceful protest is, uh, hmm. it should not be denied with the people. Hmm. And uh, of course, we, we really want that the, the, this, uh, our chief minister of Maharashtra should raise a, you know, a strong voice. They should, uh, they should do all the legal efforts to hmm. get a favorable verdict in, uh, uh, from the apex court. Hmm. So this is the only simple thing we want. This, uh, the way the, all the, you know, the, see, you see the, all the industrial projects are going from, uh, from the Maharashtra to Gujarat, uh, huh. to Gujarat. So everybody is uh, like, uh, you know, we are really, it is a matter of serious concern well, for us. Well, there was, there was a, the so original question, Dr. Seema Malik, that I asked you was that what is the need, the 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 need of for a political leader in a sensitive area to go with 300 of their supporters. Rahul, I'm coming to you. Whether it's the Eki Karan Samiti or the NCP leaders who went on the ground, the local administration, if you speak to them, the officers who are looking after the law and order, they would say that a lot of political leaders want to make a beeline, they want to make a political statement, they want to mobilize their party cutters and that's how the violence follows. We saw what was happening earlier just a few weeks ago. Buses had to be stopped between the two states and you know in no time, in no time situations like these go out of hand. The the, the real question is not yeah. who can stop the fire better hmm. but who can dust the fire, who can pour water off the fire, over the fire and who can give the healing touch. Hmm. Our national media, civil society, all other Indians should promote and highlight the efforts of those people who are trying to be bridge builders, consensus makers. Hmm. Had the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, been alive, hmm. what would have been the approach he takes? Hmm. So he will you know, bring together people. Maybe there are differences. It's hmm. an emotional issue. Nobody is denying the fact. We all understand and respect of emotions of both the Kannadigas and you know people who are Maharashtrians. At the same point of time, we need a solution. Hmm. We cannot go in close with each other. Hmm. So the real question is who can pour water over the fire, who can douse the fire and who can have the healing touch. I hope some political Mr. leaders... Mr. Hegre, I, I have last one minute on the show and this is the question that I want to ask you. You pointed out that the matter is pending to the Supreme Court of India and there is a legal resolution that the state of Maharashtra and Karnataka expect. In that backdrop, what is it that the state of Maharashtra is expecting when it comes to the intervention of none other than the Union Home Minister? What are the demands that you have made on the table before the Union government? The, the Honorable uh, Home Minister is a very firm administrator hmm. and RCM also is a very firm administrator. And therefore, we have put our point across strongly. Hmm. But uh, saying, uh, you know, just replying to what the NCP spokesperson said, hmm. I must remind her that the founder of our party was okay. the chief minister of Maharashtra three times, hmm. and the second top leader was a deputy CM four times, hmm. and they were they were they did not even try to bring. Uh, uh, a solution. Well, sir, but, I am short of time. I'm she, sorry I have but, to interrupt you she, there. But she, Mr. But Krishna Hegre, Dr. Dr. Seema Malik, Rahul Ishwar, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. What is pending before the Supreme Court is the State Reorganization Act 1956. That was the point when the states were divided on linguistic lines. Now, that reality has changed, but perhaps our political reality has not. With that, it's a wrap. Marish Shakil joins you with News Epicenter.